Hey, what's up guys? Okay, if you're new to this channel, you know what you need to do. I'd appreciate it. <laughs> Anyways, all right, and so today's episode is episode four on breaking down the pairs. We're gonna look at dollar yen's run, all right? Now, the reason why I'm showing this, this pair in particular and this move in particular as well is because there are a lot of factors that come into play in understanding what's going on when you're looking at a chart. So the purpose of this channel is to really help as many people as I can to get them just to see. You know, Jesse Livermore said it, you know, he had to train his eyes, you know, and he had no indicators back then. The poor motherfucker had to stare at a wall, you know, a tape reading. What the fuck is that? And look at what technology we've got today. And then even that is causing a problem for us because we're not getting the true element of what's going on, you know? So today's video is really going to look at understanding why did dollar yen move the way it moved on this particular day? All right. I mean, I took this trade and I I just really want to show you guys the, the thought process behind what was going on in my mind, you know, when I was taking this trade. All right. So I hope it brings value to you. So we're going to bring up a couple of charts. We're going to look at some before and afters. All right. And you guys be the judge. OK, just make sure, by the way, guys, you join my discord. All right, because that's where I get, you know, where we can get really personal. And we can ask questions that you might not want to ask on the channel. All right, just feel free to just go on there and ask whatever you want, man. We've got a good little community on there, about 45, 46 people in there so far. All right. And, you know, it's a nice place. So if you guys want to just ask any questions, feel free. If you've got any charts that you want to pull up, right, there's a channel on there where you can just put up talking pairs, it's called. And you can just start talking about any setups that you think, you know, that you'd want me to have a look at and give you my opinion on it. Remember, I don't give any financial advice. All I can tell you is what's going on on the chart at that point in time, okay? So if I can give you any insight to whatever you what you guys are doing, happy fucking days. Anyway, let's get to it. All right, guys, what's up? Okay, so... We're going to be looking about dollar yen's move from where you can see at the bottom here the w formation up to here down and then up we're going to talk about how this whole move evolved okay so we're going to get straight to the nitty-gritty of understanding what's going on with price okay so let's just pay attention to this area down here if you can see all right now, what you've got to understand is when you're when when a trend is going to change, you ha there are things that you need to take into consideration. All right. Now we need to always look at what happened beforehand. So where is the market right now? And looking behind, looking back, all right, is going to give you an inclination as to what the market makers are going to do, as well as what they've been doing. OK, now what they've been doing is going to reflect on what they could do next. Remember what they could do. All right. We're not always right. But remember, we've got to improve the chances of being right by breaking things down as follows. OK, so if we look at, as you can see here, right, dollar yen really, I mean, it's been ranging there as such. But let's start from here. So from down from the 28th of December all the way down to down to this point here, okay? Dollar yen's been pretty much dropping in price, all right? Now you've got to remember when market makers are building positions, all right? They build their longs, okay, by sending price lower. Remember the market makers, when people are going short, all right? The market makers are buying those contracts, all right? And they're using the liquidity from those who are selling, okay, to get their buy orders filled. All right. Remember that when a market is going down, it's because the market makers are buying longs at the lowest possible price. And then there's going to be a point where the trend changes so that the market makers can get their money back. All right. Remember, market makers don't have an unlimited amount of money but they have exposure to an unlimited amount of money. What that means is they need to see a profit. They need to see a return on the money that they're giving out. 
you know so these dumps in price where you see it's going down market makers are building longs at lower prices you know they drop price down cut take a few profits drop it again few profits drop profits okay all the while what they're doing is they're taking money they're taking profit before they actually start taking the majority of the monies because remember the market makers need to keep keep a market going right because if it was the case for the market makers they just keep sending price down 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 people will be going short in the end there'll be no one all right to offer the contract of going short and the market would crash it would come to shit all right so we have the market makers have to give the illusion that there could be, you know, a return to the upside or, you know, ranging, you know, this is the manipulation that they put all retail traders through. Now, it's not just retail traders as well. You know, you've got hedge funds, you've got banks, you know, there's, there's only, there's two types of money in this market. There's smart money and dumb money. And the smart money is the market maker money. All right. The dumb money is your retail traders like ourselves. All right. Banks hedge funds, mutual funds, you name it, pensions, governments, all right? That's all the dumb money. And the worst thing about it is the market maker can behave like those who have dumb money. Do you understand how fucked up this market is? You know, they can behave like smart money and they can behave like dumb money, all right? Remember, Market makers only care about liquidity. And as I said to you on the last video, we are nothing to the market even until we put our monies down, all right? When our capital is in the platform, it's on the trade, all right? That's when the market maker pays attention to us. And that's not a good thing, you know? Because he's there ready to see where are your stops? You know, how much liquidity does this guy have? You know, what, what margin is he on, you know? So keep that in mind, guys. Remember, these guys are out to fuck us over, all right? But if we're mindful about their behavior, we improve the chances of not getting fucked over and we can ride on those who are actually making the wrong decision. Those who are thinking, yeah, price is going to continue to go up. I'm going to average in and, you know, drop some more positions on there. Get, you know, get my position in good kind of thing. Yeah, no. We profit off those who make the mistake. We profit off those who want to buy a Ferrari in three trades. We profit off those people who act irrationally. All right. That's all there is to it. You know, so we've looked back and we can see that the market has been going down. All right. Now, conventional wisdom would say, yep, lower high, lower high, lower lows, lower high, lower lows. Market makers know that retail traders, right, study this. Why? Because they go and buy the book from the guy who sits on Bloomberg and says, you know what, buy this book, you know, or this guy is great. Or go on Amazon, you type, you know, top trading books, you know, for beginners, even, you know, how to tr day trade for, for beginners. Even in that book, they say, you know, a trend's changing when there's higher highs and there's lower lows or lower highs and higher lows. You know, that, that, that shit's confusing, all right? Market makers don't behave like that, all right? The higher lows and the lower highs are the market makers incorporating stop hunts in, in and on the trend, all right? But they don't tell you that, all right? Yeah, the only people that tell you that are the guys who have been around long enough, all right, and they've experienced and they've looked deeper and to understand why does price go the opposite direction on, you know, on a trend? Is it called a retrace? Nah, that's bullshit. It's the market makers need to grab all the stops that have been placed, all right, for those guys who think they're protecting their accounts. Nah, they're just, they're taking the liquidity, guys. Even here, look, you've got a drop, retrace, continuation, now, continuation traders who trade, you know, with the trend and what have you, all right, see that a, dis a, a rejection from the 50 day is, you know, get your money in good. Yeah, okay, get your money in good, but you're only managing to ride, you know, 33 pips. Now, a lot of guys want to go for the home runs. So what the market makers do, if you can see the red candles here, those are the impulses, those are the vector candles, all right? Those are the candles that make traders act irrational. You know, they're the ones that say, you know what, let's push price down. Let's get, make it aggressive looking so that we can induce more guys to run on this trend. All right. So an influx of money comes in, sends price down, and then the market makers consolidate slightly before they'd re change the trend and pull all the way back. Because remember the guys that entered up here, down here, even the guys that entered on the retest of the 50 day, remember they're looking at this shit. 
They know what retail traders are going to do. They know that the guys are going to look at the 50 day moving average. All right. And they know they're going to trade from it. Okay. And they're going to enter and they're going to wait for price to go down till they've trapped the money. They've induced traders to go in and then they change the direction. And the guys that get caught up here are the ones that are saying, you know what? I, I'm not going to close this trade. Okay. I'm going to move my stop. All right. Because we're in a downtrend anyway. I'm just going to leave it. And before you know it, they've come back and retraced the whole fucking move, spiked to the upside. Okay. And taken out all those weak traders. All right. And then they drifted to the side. And before you know it, the guys that thought, okay, we're going to be in an uptrend. Okay. Were that got in here from the spike. All right. The range traders or the guys who, the breakout traders who thought, you know what, it's going to go back to the upside. They've built their positions here. And then before you know it, they've dropped all the way back down again. And look what happens here. Retest dropped. Okay. Which leads us on to the next part. This is where I start to look for a trade. So looking at this cat, this chart here, you can see that there were three pushes to the downside. All right. The reason why I'm not zooming in guys is because if I zoom in, I'm going to lose the day. Met traders shit like that. Anyways, you can see roughly there's three pushes. These candlesticks are pushing to the downside. That to me, okay, was the market makers getting ready to change the trend. But what they're really doing is making the retail traders believe that we're in a breakout from this previous area here. I mean, look at this. It's broken from this previous area here and not gone anywhere. All right. Now you've got other instances where it does break from previous areas of support and resistance, which is bullshit again. All right. This is textbook stuff. All right. And it goes on to make massive gains. All right. But you've got to remember, we've been trailing downwards for a long time. All right. Look at all this money that the market makers have been giving out. They've been allowing traders to go short. Now they've been building longs whilst this has been happening. They need to see a profit from it. All right. So now we've effectively got a drop, touch to the downside, pull back. It's come to the 50 day. It's come back again, tested yesterday's low, which was there. See this blue line here? That was yesterday's low. Tested it and respected it. Okay. Now, this is where I entered. I entered in this area here. So I'm going to pull up the chart. And, wow. Wow. That's fucking embarrassing. Here we go. It's down here. That's why. Sorry about that, guys. Okay. So here's the chart itself, right? So this was before. So we were talking about dollar yen going down. All right. Pull back to the 50 day. So if you look, that pull back to the 50 day right there is shown here. If you can see that. All right. So we're all on the same page. And you can see it drop down there, those three candles, those pushes to the downside. Okay. Those are the vector candles. All right. Drop to the down, pulled back slightly. All right. And this was on the, let's have a look. All right. So this was on the 5th of January. Yeah. Half past day, Helsinki time. It's yeah. So it was just before the market. Yeah, it's just after the new the, the London close. Okay, because this is the New York open, this red line here. Okay. And that's the London close. All right. So built the positions there. All right. And I was keeping an eye on it because we've been dropping down, dropping down in price. And based on from what I understand about this methodology, we've got the moving averages are fanned out like no tomorrow. Look at the 200 day and the 800. All right. We've been dropping down in price. At some point, the market makers would need to return because they've effectively fulfilled their average daily range. All right. Remember, they've always got to make a return on the money they've given out. All right. So you can see this little consolidation area. This is where I built the positions. Now, if we look here, that's where that is there. Okay went up, came back down. Now I knew for a fact, okay, that if the Asian session, okay, was going to hold this zone here, then I knew we were in for a good run. Okay. Now my stops were just slightly below 
yeah, just below here. I didn't actually put a physical stop because I was actually watching this trade and I sat, what, a good 12, 15 hours watching this whole trade play out. I, I had, my body clock is completely fucked, you know, because when I'm doing my work, yeah, I'll, I'll break down charts and I could sit a five, six hour period, eight hours at a time and I'll just focus solely on that. I get lost in charts, all right? Now, as you can see down here, all right, we started seeing notable volume coming into the market, all right? As you can see, big green pushes, all right? This is the market makers effectively shifting the zone, all right? Now, I took profit on this, all right? Because of how long I was in the trade for, I, you know, I took profit on this trade and waited to see if the second leg of the W would fall. All right. So that itself was here. OK, that's the trade there. So I built the positions there and I closed the trade there. I mean, I, I could have held, but like I said, you don't know. You don't know how long you can hold for. All right. You just take what the market gives, all right? And I watched the trade and I thought to myself, okay, if they don't break below this area here, all right, I know that the formation here has been locked. The market makers have better things. They want to now start taking their profits, all right? Remember, they've got all these traders on the short side trapped because they believe that the market is going down, all right? And this pullback to the 50-day is just giving those short traders an opportunity to go short at a higher price. You know, remember, they get manipulated yet again. All right. So whilst that was happening, OK, I then decided to add more positions. So I'll bring up that trade. Where are you? Um, I believe. It was this one. Yes. Okay. So here you go. So I opened position here. All right. Closed a little bit there and I entered more positions here. And my target was effectively the 800. Okay. There was no news announcements, none whatsoever. All right. I would never trade news. All right. And the only reason why this had so much momentum in it is because the market makers down here, OK, if we look closely, this was a shifting the zone. OK, they shifted the zone. They locked the peak formation, the W. It got locked down here and they shifted the zone. Now, my understanding of this trade at the time when I placed the trades, OK, I was saying to myself, right, this entry here was ideally engineered for the 200 day. I wanted to take at least profit from the 200 day. All right. And I was happy with that. Now, I also entered again because I said to myself, right, if the market makers hit the 200 day, OK, if they come back and test the 50 day. All right. And it's successful, then we're going to hold our trade. All right. Now, I did get in a little bit prematurely on this trade here. OK, I should have waited for it to really test the 50 day, but I didn't. All right. But I understood that we were still above the peak formation. We had to respect the fact that the market makers, all right, needed to see a return on their investment. All right. So I held this entry was a bit off, but I still held the trade. I got an exposure of what? Let me have a look. From this point here, I had. Yeah, I had nine pips exposure. Now, people would look at that and think, what the fuck is that? What is nine pips? And I'm saying that's a bit of a shit entry. To me, that is, that's, that's, you know, nine, ten pips is a lot, really. Because yeah, I'm trying to, I'm effectively trying to get myself to make an entry, okay, and be as accurate as possible. Not perfect. Accurate. I mean, if I was like three, four pips off entry, okay, I had a bit of three, four pip drawdown. Happy days, man. You know? Uh, it was nine, 10 pips. OK, however, it stalled at the 50 day. Now, me looking at the 50 day here at this point in time. All right. I was waiting for it to close way below the 50 day. But if you notice something, right, the pins, 
these pins, right, the market makers were working the lows. They were absorbing the shorts that were coming into the market. They were using those shorts there, the liquidity from those shorts, so that they could get ready to make a move to the upside. All right. Notice, spike down, came back up, spike down, came back up. Even this little candlestick here, you know, doji, whatever you want to call it. Same again here. Okay. They dropped it, still kept in line of here. Okay. And then before you know it, bang, they shifted the zone. They needed to get their money in good. Because remember, the guys that saw the pullback from the 200 day, they thought, right, we're going to continue to the downside because it's tested the 200 day and it's rejected it. Okay. And then it's dropped. The market makers have now induced short sellers back in the game. It kept going, kept going. And then they stalled. A couple of traders thought, right, it's an opportunity for it to calm down, consolidate. Let's get ready to enter again short. So they started the market off again, dropped it down. They made retail traders believe that there was weakness in this pullback. And then before you know it, they opened it again, spiked it down slightly, and then bang, they moved, they shifted the zone. They shifted the zone, moved straight out of it, completely obliterated the 200 day, okay? It spiked to the high. You see the 100, um, the 103 area? Now, my PVSRA system says that market makers build their longs below key areas in order to close them at a higher price. It's exactly what happened here. They spiked, came back, added a few more positions, spiked again. I entered here again, okay? And they went all the way to the 800 um, EMA. Now, I left some money on the table there, okay? I left a lot of money on the table and I was happy though. You know, because I mean, look, I'm, it must have been about how many pips was that? That was from that point on. Yeah, it was like 40, 50 pips there. Yeah, 35, 36 pips. Happy days, you know? <laughs> That's me. Done. Close the laptop. Finished. Okay. Now, the understanding of it was this. Okay. We had hit the formation. Okay. The peak formation. All right. Now, because the market works in cycles, you have to understand this, all right? The market makers, they have a weekly target and they have weekly cycles, all right, to achieve those targets. Now, these cycles in a week happen between two to five days, okay? Now, from the peak formation, which is the drop down here, all right, we were expecting that the market was going to shift out from this area. Okay, and that's exactly what it did. It moved out. So to me, okay, I knew that level one, which is the first part of the cycle had been achieved. Okay, so level one was down here and it ended up here. Okay, now it started to pull back. All right, now that we know now that on the pullback, we're gonna be looking at a level two, which is another run to the upside. Why? Because the market makers need to create a market. It's part of their, their weekly cycle. They need to move up another level, all right? In order for them to bank on the money that they've been giving away here, they need to create an illusion, okay, that it's over and that we're going to start getting more short sellers back in just to keep the liquidity coming into the market, all right? So the market makers, they send price up. We know that level one has finished, all right? When it's spiked all the way out of the three, um, the 800 moving average, it's now pulled back aggressively. Now, this move to the upside, all right, is a, it's not a, such a stop hunt, okay, but it's also shifting the zone. It's the market makers getting their money. But you've got to remember, Steve Morrow said, okay, a fast move is a false move, all right? Excuse me. A fast move is a false move, okay? The true trend, the true move happens over a period of time, all right? Because remember, the market makers have got millions and millions of pounds, dollars, whatever you want to say, all right? And they need to do it in such a way that it complies with the regulatory requirements of the IMF, all right? They've got to stick within those boundaries because if they don't, they fuck the market, all right? And they need the market for so they can make money. It's simple as that, all right? So once level one had finished, I started to pay attention to it and then it aggressively dropped, all right? Then we pay attention to the moving average, okay? You've got 
the 200 moving the 200 day moving average down here now i started to pay attention to this all right at the time okay i will get the chart up for you now um where was it okay dolly and young long sorry here's the trade so this was it so i saw that we hit level one okay we've come back down and we formed another w formation okay now here's where confluence comes into play all right look at these candlesticks here they touched the 200 day a double bottom at the 200 day that's what the terminology would be in those textbooks okay but what the market makers did is they touched it showed support went to the 50 came back okay they showed their support in this area here this is a massive confluence right here all right now the touch of the 200 day right there all right and the fact that price had crossed over the 50 day had crossed over the ema okay implied that there was strength but more importantly we knew that there had to be another move to the upside because they achieved the first part of the cycle all right the, the peak formation down here has been locked in this area now is locked solid there's no way that they're going to send price down here because that's where they started their manipulation process and that's how they aggressively moved price out of that zone all right so they they've, they've trapped money down here all right and now they need to get out of that area so they can see a profit okay and the process starts again they get money in here they trap money here trap money here and they repeat the process and they move the zone again they go up pull back support at the 50 day if you look at the 50 day here pay attention to the pin bars they're working the lows working the lows working it spiked down look it touches the 50 day to the pip okay touches it to the pip right goes back over closes above it and then off it goes all right it goes up and it looks to try and test yesterday's high now this was this image here was effectively this here okay so we were expecting another move to the upside and that's exactly what had happened remember the market makers work in cycles all right let me do this for you okay you've got here you've got this here okay you've got formation at the bottom you've got impulse move up pull back up pull back up formation and down okay this is the cycle as steve teaches you've got w okay v v m likewise on on, on when it's on the upside okay you've got m drop out the zone shift out of the zone pull back drop pull back drop w and back up okay now it's m a a w okay so you've got the m there you've got a there a there and you've got w and the process repeats again now this can happen several t um, several times in a week okay and like like we're shown here okay how many times it's happened here all right you've got it here w effectively you've got this would be your v down here so it'd be w v v m at the top okay now look at how it how it unfolded all right you've got w down here level one level two start that would be your v okay level two end because it's taken it's made a high and started to consolidate so the way you determine a level is when it starts to consolidate and pull back so level one consolidate and drop consolidate level two start rise takes out the previous high the only way you can determine that you're in a cycle okay and that it's working another level is if the previous resistance of the last level end has been broken okay so you can see from here it's broken it out taking it out yesterday's high was taken out all right so they worked up pulled back worked it and they consolidated now the fact that level two has ended we now are expecting a level three the final phase of this up move okay so level three is the time when the market makers really get choppy and it doesn't look like anything is forming until they do one of two things 
okay? What they do is they start getting a bit aggressive on the upside. So look what happened this week with the, um, yeah, on the 11th of January, dollar yen, what does it do? It prints an M. Now some guys would see this as a triple top. Okay, you got one hit there, two and three. But what's really happening is the market makers are building the final phase of the up cycle. Now the money that they've been giving away on this move up, okay, is now time to give it back. Okay, and get back that profit. Now I spoke about this move to the downside, all right, in my last video on episode, it was episode two of the market. No, episode one of dollar yen. Okay, it was yeah, episode one of breaking down the pairs. All right, we spoke about dollar yen and this move to the downside. All right, and we drew up what was going to happen to dollar yen. And sorry, no, it wasn't this move. It was this move here. Okay, so go to episode one and have a look at the notes on that on that um, video. And we talk about what was going on with dollar yen and why was it going to drop. Okay, but as you can see, the cycle starts again, guys. You've got an M level one. Okay, level one ends here. Start level two, pulls up. Okay, level two ends. Level three start level three ends and look what you've got you've got another m bang level one now it's consolidating okay it's consolidating because we've not really made any significant move i mean you could trade these little um bear with me you could trade these um small little w's you could trade that one okay you know it was locked there Okay, and the pin bar rejection, and you could enter here. Okay, getting your money in good. The trade back to the 50 day or the 200, which is exactly what happened here. All right, but what we're waiting for now is we've effectively done a level one. Now we're working on a range. So right now we're, we're stuck in a range on dollar yen. Okay, we are literally, I'd say from, yeah, from this box, yeah, from this area here, yeah. This is our range. We're stuck in this area here. There's nothing really happening, okay? So to me, this is still, it's level one and it's now working on level two. Now we're waiting for dollar yen, okay? It's not really doing anything for me. There's no direction. So we can't tell if we're going to work for a level two to the downside or if the formation is going to reset. Right now, the formation is here, okay? So we have to respect the formation that it's going down, all right? but we don't know yet. The moving averages are kissing each other, all right? They're so tight here, so we just need to wait. We could actually just go down to the one hour time frame where we'll see the true cycle, all right? Oops, and we could see where are we in that sense. You've got the M formation, level one, pulls back, effectively pulled back enough for it to reset, okay? So it's reset the cycle as such because it's pulled all the way back. All right, so dollar yen right now is in lingo, okay? There's no clear direction of where it's going to go, all right? So as traders, there's one or two things we can do. We can sit and wait for it to move, or we just go to another pair, okay? As you can see, this is the hour chart, drop down, up, down, up, down, up. This is the cycles is what we need to understand. The market makers move price in cycles, all right? I'm not talking about no Elliott wave or anything like that, okay? It's the market maker cycle. They know that they can move price, okay, in three phases, all right? And those are levels. First level, out of the zone, pull back. Second level. The second level is usually not done by market makers. It's allowing the retail traders and all the banks to take control, all right? It's allowing them, and if you notice here, market makers spiked price and spiked it back up there. That's market makers stepping in just to make sure that they're regulating the price because they know that they wanna keep price going higher because they're setting up the shorts, okay? Remember, when they're dropping price, they're buying longs. When they're rising price, they're selling into shorts, okay? And then you've got the M formation up here, double top right there, all right? Climatic, three pushes, okay? They pushed price, three vectors to the upside to create the illusion that there was gonna be a run to the upside, and then they shifted the zone, pulled it back, 
consolidated, made more traders believe that it was only a small pullback to the upside. Okay, so they added more positions and then they dropped. And then the final drop was here when they spiked to the upside. So if you pay attention to that one there, to that candle, they spiked it, pulled it back. And then as previously, they shifted the zone. They came straight out of it. All right, the New York session, they just shifted out of it because they needed to get their money in good. They've trapped all these traders going long. And now they're moving out. Remember, the first level, okay, from a formation like this is always aggressive. And that's what's happened here. All right, if we look, let's go back. Look at this level. Look at level one. Oh, for God's sake, I hate MT4 when it does this. Okay. Look at down here. Look how aggressive they moved out of the zone. Aggressive move up, aggressive move up. Remember, they moved up quick because they needed to get their money out of the market. All right? So the, the, the trades that I took, okay, I was really happy with this trade because... And I'm, I'm not saying this because, you know, I'm trying to show you like, hey, guys, look, I predicted what happened next. No, it's because... I understand what phase we are in with the market maker, okay? It's understanding where we are, all right? They need to make money at some point, all right? And they print certain candlesticks. They do certain things, right, to catch traders out. And it's about being aware and training the eyes, all right? And there's a saying, if you can't see it in hindsight, this is what Steve Myro says, so if you can't see it in hindsight, you're not going to see it in foresight, okay? And when I say that, I'm talking about understanding how were we able to know that from this point here, okay, it was going to continue up, all right? Let's get that chart back again here. How was I knowing that it was going to continue to the upside from this point here, okay? I took the risk, I put the money down because based on what I understand about this methodology, okay, aggressive move to the downside and consolidated, we've been dropping, okay, the EMAs had been fanned out, there needs to be some order put back into the market, okay, and then you can see they shifted the zone out, all right, they pulled back, it's effectively your second leg as such, okay, and this could have been an entry, some guys would have entered here who understand the system. They enter here, all right? I entered here and here for more confirmation. Close above the 50-day. Was the 50-day strong? Okay, and bang, straight out. I took the vector move. I took the big move that happened in Dolly M. There was no news on that day, none whatsoever. I don't trade news at all, okay? And when people see moves like this, they say, oh, you know, something happened in the market. What news has come out? None. It was the market makers shifting the zone. They needed to get their money because they've trapped all these retail traders going short. All right. And they needed to fuck the market by getting price and moving it aggressively to the upside. OK. And then they brought it right back down again, straight back into the zone. OK. Confusing the fuck out of traders. Like, where is it going? You know, all oh, right, that's it. I'm going back short again. Look at how the red candles here. Look at these red candlesticks. These candlesticks are the amount of times prices exchanged at that point in time. Aggressive, aggressive, aggressive. Okay. Bring it down. The 200 day acting as support. Okay. Pull back. Aggressive move. Luring in traders. Now you've got to remember, guys. Okay. When you're looking at this, when it's static and it's not moving. All right. It's easy for me to say, yeah, a big move to the downside. But when you're watching it in real time, when you see that this candle opened, spiked up and then it closed down. OK, so in such a long, in, you know, this candle frequency. All right. As a trader watching that and you were short here or you were short here and you didn't want to miss out. OK, you're using that as an entry. Guaranteed. You are using that as an entry, all right? This is an emotional candle, all right? Because it's making retail traders believe that it's going to break the 50-day. Look at the pressure of that. I bet stochastics are all pointing to the downside or breaking the, you know, the RSIs or the CCI and or the Dutch traders, wherever the fuck they are, okay? 
but you only need to pay attention to what the price is doing. Look at this next candle here. This next candle is so critical. Look. It opens, spikes back up, okay, to make guys believe that the 50 day, the 200 day is weak, okay? It's sorry, it's strong, okay? Pulls back and closes below it. All right? That made 101 traders believe that the break of the 200 day and it was going to continue to the downside. Okay. The next candle did exactly the same thing. Tapped. It touched it just below there. Make Just get that little bit more of liquidity of traders. Okay. Who think it's still going to continue to the downside. And they did it again. They opened, pulled price back and then bang, they shifted the fucking zone. They just trapped all those motherfuckers here, all right, squashed their accounts, took their stops, and then they ran for the fucking money. And that, guys, is exactly what you need to be reading on price. There's no fucking indicators on here, okay? Guys, this is all I've got, all right? This t these blue lines here tell me the yesterday's, the last session's high and low, okay? This is a 50-day, all right? 5 EMA, 13 EMA, 200 day EMA, 800 day EMA, okay? This is a dashboard that my friend Chris created. Okay, he's been a, he's, he's a software engineer. He created this, which tells me where the peak formations are, all right? And it gives me the status of the ADR, all right? It tells me where price is in terms of his average daily range, all right? And you, at this point in time down here, Okay, the ADR of dollar yen at that point in time was 0.93. All right, now on average, okay, a cycle that occurs, the each level that appears is one ADR. All right, so dollar yen's ADR on average is 54 pips. Okay, now the full range of the ADI is ADR times three. So remember what I said in the last video the significance of three. All right, dollar yen has effectively, all right, so it keeps the markets going, it can move price in a range of three times ADR to achieve 163 pips. So let's see, from the low to the high, we've got 181 pips, all right? Variation on the theme, as Steve says. It's not always going to be to the T, okay? Because sometimes it can go from that low all the way up to here, okay? And it'll be 175 or from here, you could get you know, to this high, you got 159. It all depends. But on average, they stay within their ADR. And if they're above their ADR, it's usually because something drastic has happened or a news announcement's allowed them to really manipulate price. Okay. But what do the market makers do? They bring price back into the range. They bring it back to normalize the market so that they can repeat the same process again and again and again. All right, so we've gone through the reason why dollar yen made the move that it did, okay? And that was just, that, that's just something that it happens all the time, guys, all right? And it shouldn't take you by surprise because remember, the market doesn't change its behavior. Why? Because people don't change their fucking behavior. People will always be fearful and people will always be greedy, all right? And this is what you need to get into your minds, all right? You need to understand the market makers take advantage of our indecision, our irrational behavior. They make us be indecisive and irrational, all right? But our jobs as traders, all right, is to not try and master our psychology to a point where we become immune to feeling fearful or greedy. Man, if we didn't have those emotions, we would be dead, okay? We wouldn't be operating as human beings. All right, no trader out there, whether you're a fucking nine figure trader, whatever. Okay, if you're saying to me that you have no emotions, that would be a lie. All right, understand this, guys. Okay, traders themselves, right, when they come to a transitionary period where they say to themselves, right, I get it now. Okay, I'm okay with certain things. I'm going to stick to my strategy. I'm going to do this. You know, it's, it makes life a lot easier and you're able to apply your information or your strategy easily because you're not falling for the traps that the market makers make you go through. All right. 
this system, the strategy that I use, all right, it's allowed me to do that, all right? Now, over the next couple of videos, I'm going to be introducing to you to the actual indicators, and I say indicators, the setup of everything, all right? Um, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to talk you guys through each element of the the indicator itself and then what I would like is for those who want me to send them the indicators all right I have my email address just send me an email or join the discord all right I'm going to create a channel where it's for those who want to download the indicators all right actually yeah that's what we're going to do I'm going to create a channel on the discord where you can go and download the indicators for yourself all right and you can you know install them on your meta traders all right and if you have any questions, you know, come to me and ask me the questions. But what I am going to do is I'm going to do a video on how everything works. All right. And then from that point, all right, once you get the indicators, all right, we're going to, I'm going to keep doing breaking down the pair series. I'm, I'm just going to be talking over the same shit over and over again. So I can get it in your mind so that you're familiar with it. Remember, if you can't see it in hindsight, you're not going to see it in foresight. All right, you're not going to know what to look for. Do you understand that? By not being able to see it, okay, you're not going to know how to look for it. Do you understand that? It's it, it's the hindsight foresight. It makes sense. And you know, some guys do say it's easy to talk about something that's already happened. Yeah. All right, but we're looking at the build up of it, and if we can train our eyes to see it, then happy fucking days. And another thing, okay. What you can see in front of you is just a few pointers to understand, all right? So in point one, there are no indicators that will guarantee, you know, that price will go your desired way, all right? And that's relevant, okay? Two, understand where we are in the cycle. Three, market makers do have price targets to fulfill, all right? That's important. That's how we were able to understand why Dolly Yen did the move that, that she did. Four, our trade starts when it's on. Beforehand, it's all noise. Once the trade is live, we need to apply ourselves optimally so that we're not responding in an irrational or, you know, an indecisive way because that's what the market makers want us to feel. And the final point, it can change and you have to be okay with this. You know, as much as you can look for these, these patterns and whatever, Okay, at any point it can change. The cycle can change. Market makers could only trade, you know, do a cycle over two days. Okay, not three, four or five. You know, they switch it up. They keep us on edge. But our job as traders is to try and capitalize on the moments that we can see that it's going to go in one direction and we get in, get our money good and go. All right. So guys, I hope that this video does actually, it's just opened your eyes a little bit. All right. My commitment to you guys is I'm just going to run this series of breaking down the pairs and every single day you're going to be getting a video, all right, where I'm just talking about the pairs and why they did the moves that they did and projections of where it could go, all right? You know, there's not going to be no right or wrong, all right? You know, don't feel obliged to, um, you know, like rush into kind of things. This is going to be happening all the time and I'm doing this for myself as well, all right? It's all part of mastery is being able to relay this information to people and if they can absorb it and apply it and be successful at it, at it, I know I'm doing it right, you know? The reward for me is knowing that people are applying it and it's changing the way they, change, they, they trade, sorry, all right? So that's my commitment to you guys. I'm gonna keep doing these videos, keep talking about how price is moving, talking about the market makers, because remember, repetition divas the impression all right, as long as I can keep saying it and saying it, it's going to get in your mind, it's going to stay there. All right, and then every time you do trade, you're going to be thinking back to all the conversations that we've had and the videos that you've watched. All right, watch them over and over again. I know these videos are long, but guys, it's about condensing the information in such a way where for an hour, you know, we're focusing on one bit. All right, and you're getting the most out of that one bit. All right. So this break the down pair series, I hope it's really going to serve people because we've done the psychology part of the, the, the channel and we'll continue to do more of that. All right. 
but breaking down the pairs is just going to bring everything together all right so guys make sure you join the discord all right because that's where everything's going to be going to be there for you to download everything and then the next few videos are on how to apply this information all right much love to you guys stay safe and we'll catch up soon